We're going to call to order. Okay. Nancy Kopko. Present. Terry Pavisich. Here. 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 your legs, Mr. Renner. Mike Denver. Here. I need it too. Fuller. Here. Dan Nicholas. Here. Rick Pavanato. Here. Don Renner. Here. And Kirk Hoffman. Present. Thank you. Okay, we have a quorum. Let's stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm doing good. Great. We will start tonight with the uh, motion for the approval of minutes for the June 18th business meeting and the June 18th closed meeting. Uh, I move that we accept the uh, minutes as presented. Second. Second. Mike seconds. Terry Pevisich. Aye. Mike Davenport. Aye. Cheryl Fuller. Aye. Dan Nicholas. Aye. Rick Pavanato. Aye. 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 And Nancy Cup. Hi, motion carries and those minutes will be made public within 15 days. Uh, we're gonna move on to our first reception of visitors, which uh, the meeting includes two opportunities for comments from the audience. This first reception of visitors is intended for audience members to address the board about any agenda item on which the board will vote. Does anybody wish to address the board? Hearing none, we'll move on to the recommendations and reports of the superintendent. End of year financial report. Okay. I'm gonna talk now up up the uh, fund balances this is um, our third report of the year we do one for the first uh, I'm sorry mm -hmm. the second uh, mid-year point third quarter and fourth quarter um, and just to remind the board and the community members here this is really just a monitoring um, process for us to make sure our our budget is in line with our expectations it's, it's done on a on a cash basis primarily we do make some larger adjustments for some things that would really misstate our, our position at the end of the year for instance our early taxes uh, we receive taxes in June but we don't use those for revenue in this fiscal year they're put off to the next fiscal year um, and, and we've had such a, a problem with collections from the state that we started uh, several years back accruing the amounts that the state owed us that were in being delayed that we eventually did pick up uh, our audit, though, will show when we have that done at the end of the year. There's a 60-day window that if we don't collect it within 60 days, we won't show it as a receivable. Um, and so we are going to, you know, we have to wait for that period of time to pass. We can complete our audit, and then we'll have an exact accounting for where we are. But this just gives us a good idea of where we are going into the, the budget planning process that we're, we're now concluding, but before we pass a final budget. We want to take a look at everything, um, and we're pretty pleased. We're off, uh, from eighty-nine million dollars worth of revenues. Uh, we're off two hundred eighty-two thousand dollars overall between the revenues expenditures and the change in position. We had budgeted for no increase. Um, we did have a, a decrease, um, although last year, again at this stage, where there was a lot of variables still in play. Um, we were trying to increase our fund balance by a million dollars and we increased it by 1.4 million dollars so that's the kind of play we have between the years um, that um, you know we, we try and keep that within a half percent to one percent um, typically for the the net amount between the two the reason we do run over on, on revenues compared to budget is that often when we prepare our, our budget we don't have final numbers from the state in terms of the revenues that they can, they're going to make available to us, or the Fed. Um, what they do is everybody across, well, at least in Illinois, that we put in our request for um, the budget from some federal pro projects that we have, and if there's money left over, they reallocate it to us. So that increases both the revenues and the expenditures when we, we actually get the dollars and use them in our programs. Um, so well, we're, we're pretty pleased where we ended up with this. Uh, one last note, just a, just another thing that adds to the variation. The second line item down, the Ed Fund Health Account. This year, we just take what the what the cash balance is at, at the end of the year, and it's 2.2 million dollars. Um, and so this year, it was actually 36 thousand dollars lower than it was last year. Last year, it was 217 thousand dollars higher than it was. That account fluctuates very much just because of monthly bills for claims paid uh, again we'll we'll have a fuller accounting a better accounting of the educational fund um, after you know, we we you see what the run out is and some payables that we have for the from the actually go back to services that occurred in in june so 
it's just kind of a rough uh, look at it. Pretty pleased with where it came out. Uh, let's take a look at the um, revenues quickly. And um, I won't go through everything that's in the, 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 the memo. Property tax, because we, we have it in hand when we do our budget, we, we have a pretty good idea. We do get a little bit extra sometimes um, from prior years that the county's been holding on to for appeals. Uh, so sometimes we get a little bit more in that account. Replacements taxes was is, was a nice surprise. We were told uh, it was going to drop by two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Only went down by one hundred seventy. It, it could be that if they did take two hundred fifty off the table, but then we, there were more uh, replacement taxes paid. That's more likely what happened than the, that they had anticipated. So the Illinois Department of Revenue um, gave us some conservative figures, and we 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 did better with replacement taxes than we expected. Um, interest income has been, you know, finally coming up for years. I've been saying it's going to go up. Finally, finally it did. Uh, last year, about this time, our uh, investment portfolio was about one one percent lower, one one point one percent. This year, we're about two point one percent. So we we do and we do expect another couple of interest moves by the Fed, which uh, does affect the, the interest rates in the market and. Um, so we expect to be able to budget even higher number for next year. So that's one of the bright spots that we are looking forward to as we developed our budget for next year. Um, nothing really too exciting other than we look at uh, the last two items, the general state aid and the federal aid. Um, the state has, we got to say it when they do it, they actually did catch up quite, on quite a bit of the uh, backlog that they uh, had been promising last, last year. They were $1.7 million behind. Uh, this year we're only $485,000 behind what, what they should have paid us by this, by this point in time. Uh, so it's, it, they made up $1.2 million difference uh, during the course of the year. And the Fed last year uh, um, owed us $420,000. This year was only $160,000 at the end of the year. So both uh, those large accounts uh, have, have been caught up um, closer to budget, actually exceeding budget, which is a good thing because we, we're never sure when we're going to get from here that those entities from, from year to year and then the expenditure side if um i'm gonna throw that guy up here for us okay so uh this is where we had some voluntary there's a uh, volatility there's a couple things that really um that didn't pan out i'll say a couple like the food uh food program did they did well in terms of the purchase services our salaries and benefits are almost always really tight like like they are here uh, one one thing on the the benefits is the IMRF fund um, mm -hmm. did the the mid year that we get a new rate on a calendar year basis so mid year the rate did go up for for the cost there um, but we we also just missed some people quite honestly when we did our pull down off the system and so we didn't have all the IMRF this so we under we overspent that line item and that's something we've corrected for this year um, so it was a rarity we did not had that happen to us before. Um, but the uh, back in the purchase services are, are we have both transportation costs, which we were hoping to cut out a couple of routes last year, but the ridership just wouldn't let us do it. The way the kids are spread out, uh, in order we have a standard for how long to, to keep the, the kids on the bus, or the, no longer than uh, for a child to be on a bus. Our target is usually 45 minutes. We don't want any bus to be longer than 45 minute run. Um, and we don't want more than 40, uh, if we can, 40 kids on a bus, even though there's seats for, I think, 44 or 46. There's, there's some kids that, like me, I needed a full seat when I was a kid, so we, we allow a little bit of room for those guys. Um, and then our legal bills are, are we've been uh, having, uh, we have some legal issues this year. We've been fighting some lawsuits. Um, and uh, so our legal fees are up a bit, um, all contributing to that uh, purchase services mm -hmm. over expanding a little larger than we normally <coughs> expect. Um, if we look at uh, the capital outlay, the only thing surprising there was, if you recall, in the second quarter, we, we had a special uh, needs student at the T99 facility that uh, was wheelchair bound mm -hmm. and for him to get access to his job and to get out of the T99 we had to buy what we uh, we weren't expecting that but he moved into the district during the year and um, so we have a uh, purchased a wheelchair accessible van for for that student because he'll be with us for a number of years we believe and and we had used up the capacity we had in the other van so that there was the only little unexpected thing with capital outlay um, 
tuition and, and, and special ed are always volatile. We um, uh, overspent some of this budget uh, a little bit, but, um, and those are um, things that we really you know, work very hard, and I think you're gonna hear uh, not too long from now after an update on the special ed um, program we're getting a lot of new kids. We are, our enrollment in that particular area is going up, and so that's gonna be one of the toughest things that we fight next year in terms of the budget, in terms of finding ways to um, uh, afford some of those expenses that we have. We have to pay them, and so it'll mean we, we're really digging deep to try and um, keep our total budget. Again, this is a monitor to help our budget. It's gonna be um, going up again next year, so we're gonna have some some more kids. and and. Uh, we're doing a really good job of, of bringing more kids into the district rather than paying tuition, mm -hmm. but we still have a large number of, in, of kids coming in next year. And our SACID rates are gonna go up. Pardon? Our SACID rates are gonna go up. Yeah, it's, it's, we always expect that. I mean, really, they're very, because a lot of special ed costs are medical related and, and also just finding people, it's, it's tougher. It's a, it's a tough area to find good special ed people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they, and generally they have a high number of degrees and are very specialized and it is, it's a very expensive okay. area. I, my one and a half years working at a special ed co-op as a business manager, I was astounded how, you know, I was on the other side having to tell the schools why their expenses are going up. So I do understand what's mm -hmm. going on in the background there. Mm -hmm. So that's it. We're relatively uh, pleased with it. It's a, the, the budget overall, you know, uh, we we're off by, uh, one percent on the expenditures and the one percent on the revenues individually. Um, so we're we're pretty pleased with how we came out this year. Any questions? I'm always amazed at how close to budget you can. I mean, you know, it's a guess. A budget is a guess. Well, based we, on, it's a swag and. Our biggest cost, obviously, salary and, and sure. benefits is, is, you know, usually you have that in place. There's variables in there. They're like substitutes and illnesses, and mm -hmm. we've actually had our share of those this year. Uh, maternity leave. That's amazing. Yeah, and uh, so then well, you're replacing you know, your subs costs go up, and there's, whether you have a heavy snow and you're a, lot, a real snowy season, you have a lot of overtime and custodial and maintenance so I mean there's yeah. there are factors but a lot of our budget quite honestly is is pretty well fixed it's it's the other things that come into play that you gotta watch a little closer thank you though any other questions or comments okay hearing none let's move on thank you Rick Mark <laughs> <laughs> Rick Mark, Rick Mark. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the deep equity program Thanks. hi everyone I'm back <laughs> Yeah. It's a little last month. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad to see you. Still yeah. can't pronounce my job, uh, job title yet, but <laughs> <laughs> getting there. It's okay. <laughs> Um, so last uh, month I was here talking to you about the personalized professional learning and I said at that presentation that I'll be back at a later date to talk about deep equity. So here we are at this later date to talk about deep equity. Just a quick reminder, all the work that we're doing uh, in this is helping us with our domain two goal, the development evalu and evaluation of staff enhancing current practices, identifying strengths and challenges, and creating new processes that empower staff to create conditions for a positive and effective student experience. So last month I talked about how we have gone through this process of redesigning our certified appraisal system. Uh, we, are, we designed and we're piloting the personalized professional learning, and now we're gonna talk about deep equity. So how deep equity fits in these other pieces is that as our staff is uh, learning together and developing their lessons, we want them to look at their work through the lens of equity. So we're building out this program so they can be aware and they can use that lens as they develop their lessons. Uh, best summed up by Gary Howard, who is the expert that we used to put our program together. And he says that we want to be teaching and leading in such a way that more of our students across more of their distance differences achieve at a higher level and engage at a deeper level more of the time without giving up who they are. So that's our goal. And all three of these are wrapped together in that we're chasing this idea of collective efficacy, uh, creating an environment where our staff can uh, learn together, grow together, and act together to uh, create positive environments for our students. So our first process, or our first part of this process was identifying a team, uh, finding a team of stakeholders within our organization 
that could give us different perspectives and can help us to build out this program. So we had a team of 21 staff members. Uh, there were teachers, librarians, counselors, support staff members, deans, uh, seed experts, our workshop facilitators, those two groups are our staff developers, uh, department chairs, and then I was the administrator on the group. So the equity team over this past school year, we had four formal training sessions with experts of Gary Howard's. We also had multiple meetings where we broke into smaller groups and those smaller groups had tasks associated with designing this program. And then uh, we have summer curriculum work and I'm working still with some groups this summer getting the curriculum ready for this next school year. These are the experts that came in and visited us. Gary Howard all the way on the right. Um, he's been in, at this for about 30 years and we use his book uh, to really steer our thinking and steer our curriculum, which is we can't lead where we won't go. Uh, Gary sent uh, two of his consultants to us this year. So we had Dr. Kathy Lassiter and we had Wade Caldwell. Both were uh, here for all four days. <coughs> so a brief history on this subject within District 99. In 2015-16 school year is when we started SEED. And as we prepared for that, we trained four of our staff to go and become facilitators of SEED. Uh, it's been very successful, a lot of great feedback on it, and we continue to run it. So uh, we usually run two sessions of that during the school year, and then this summer we ran a session to accommodate our staff that can't meet during the school year. Could you just remind everybody what SEED is? Sure. That is a program um, that is focused on internal reflection, uh, um, reflecting on who you are, uncovering your biases and uh, being aware of that as you interact with people and being aware of what their perception is of your actions through their lenses. And that abbreviation is? Uh, seeking Equity. Yeah, thank you, Ed. Seeking Educational Equity and Diversity. Okay. Through, through diversity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the staff um, like that. The one piece of feedback that we've received from that program though is that they were hoping to get a little bit more uh, in terms of how can they apply that to their workplace. Um, so they see the value in the internal component of it, but they would like more, more of how do I apply this to the classroom or any other role that I serve within the district. So the spring of 2017, we had a faculty session regarding equity. Uh, that session included videos of students expressing themselves and explaining what their uh, experience is like within our district. Um, it was really good for our staff to hear from our students. And then at the end of that school year, June 9th of 2017, we brought Gary Howard in on our institute day, the last day of the school year. Um, and all faculty had a session with Gary uh, talking about his deep equity process. So then this past school year, on opening day, we had um, another session where the faculty was reflecting on what Gary had said um, and talked about on June 9th, and then we started to get into how can we apply this into <coughs> our workplace. Um, and then at the same time, we identified that equity team, and then that equity team uh, we met throughout this past school year to plan what would a, a large-scale implementation of this program look like. So this is uh, what our implementation is going to look like. I'll start on the right side of the slide here. We realized during this process that uh, to do this with Fidelity, we're going to need to spend multiple days on it with people really taking us deep. So uh, we're going to do a four full day workshop with participants um, in this program. Uh, we're calling it Deep Dive into Deep Equity. Uh, so it's four days of really uh, starting out with the beginning of this program, which is uh, uh, building tone and trust among the participants, and then working our way through that process to applications in our workplace. Because we have, um, we can't train everybody all in the same year, we decided that this upcoming school year, 2018 and 19, our target audience for the workshop is going to be our administrators and our department chairs. So that way they are ready as their staff uh, start to take this workshop um, to lead those conversations in their departments and within their schools. And then 2019, 2020, we're gonna open it up to all staff. So this is a little different than our instructional workshops in that this will be open to all staff, not just our faculty. 
So anybody that works within yeah. our organization oh, okay. will have access to this Very and will be good. able to really uh, participate in this. Will it be four separate days throughout the year or four back to back to back to back? Four throughout the year. Okay. Spread throughout the year. So the other thing that the equity team recognized is that uh, the staff did something June 9th, June 9th, and then that August they did something this past school year, and then we didn't, we haven't done anything formal with the entire staff, and we don't want to wait until all staff get through this workshop before we do organizational uh, pieces to this. So in parallel to this workshop, we are running um, all staff sessions throughout this next school year. So we're starting with opening day. There's an 80 minute session. And then we have four of our late start mornings throughout the school year, space throughout the school year, also 80 minute sessions. And those are all staff also. Um, so anybody that works in our buildings is going to be in those sessions, engaging in this learning around equity. And then our administrators and department chairs, they're doing that, but then they're also doing this mm -hmm. deep dive four day workshop. So, indulge me for a second. Yeah. yeah. A lot of good information, but what does this look like from a teacher perspective? I see the implementation, I see kind of reasons we're doing it, but in a practical manner, how is it applied and what, how, what do the teachers actually go through as this deep equity is being implemented? Sure. So, um, this deep equity is a, um, it's a four phase process. Um, and it's designed that the team that you go through this process with is the team that you go through the whole time. So it starts out with uh, building tone and trust, so create an environment in that learning space uh, for the adults to be able to fully express their views, uncover their views. Um, we move through a personal journey, which is uncovering seed-like stuff, uncovering um, your biases and your thoughts. Um, we do some work on social justice, and then once we do that, then our final session is, let's talk about how we can apply this to our workplace. So it will be um, lesson planning, classroom applications, uh, anything within the classroom. Could be the curriculum, it could be procedures within the classroom um, for the teacher to apply it there. Uh, we're, we're changing this a little bit because this deep equity program says classroom applications, but it's all staff, so we we're changing it from classroom applications to school-based. So our secretarial staff, their fourth day is gonna be designed around within their workplace, how can they apply these things that they learned on those first three days. I guess also, like you said, you're doing curriculum work this summer. Mm -hmm. What part of the curriculum are you changing or adding? Not student curriculum, uh, professional development curriculum. Oh. So what's being taught during that workshop and then what's being taught during when those When it does get days. down then to the student level, what what would, like as a teacher, what could I expect be doing different under this program than what I'm doing prior to this program? Yeah, so um, I'm not an expert in all curriculum areas, but that's the reason why we want the administrators and the chairs in first so they can start to think about how is this gonna be applied into our social studies or our science or our PE. Um, and at the same time, we work in PLCs. So the idea is that this program um, opens up ideas, and then when they get into their PLCs and their department meetings, they're the professionals and they can figure out how, as a group, they want to modify. Yeah. Is this so much, I'm sorry, were you, were you done? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is this so much, though, about changes to student curriculum as behavior change for teachers? It can be both, right? Okay. Right. You know, because I really commend you, because we know from organizational theory that you have to get leadership on board first mm -hmm. it makes total sense to me but this is this a lot of the work that we've been doing around personalized learning uh -huh. and student perspective this is just another piece of it right understanding what the students <coughs> lens is uh, what is their experience in the classroom this helps gives us another way to drill down on that okay and are we anticipating getting student leadership in? Like we have student leadership on the board. Are we anticipating it's student leadership? It's a good segue to one of my oh, slides. Here. <laughs> Thank you. I looked at the slides earlier. Maybe I'm just. It's yeah. The big reveal. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Okay. So our next steps in this is um, we've designed what the program looks like. Now the equity team uh, needs to spend some time figuring out what are we going to measure to help us to make sure that we're on target and to help us modify the program as the years go on. Um, so that's one piece we're gonna figure out this next year. Um, I talked about the center column there, which is our implementation. 
And then the other piece, I've talked to our consultants, we're meeting with them three times this next year. And so part of the meetings with them is going to be uh, checking up how are how is the implementation with adults going, mm -hmm. but then them walking us through this process of how do we design a student program for this also. So we're starting with uh, administrators, department chairs, we're moving into all staff, and then we're designing a program for students. Hmm. That is my presentation. Do you have other questions? I, I do. Yeah. So this is this sounds good. Um, regarding the student piece, you're going to kind of do this just with the leadership and kind of the consultants walking you guys through it. And then at some point, you'll bring the students on to kind of hash out from their perspective. Where does their perspective come in yeah, early so, on in this So process? that's what we need to figure out is um, the same company that we've used, uh, Corwin, for uh, educating us on this program and then helping us design our own program. Mm -hmm. They offer a student program where the, the experts come in um, and they work with student leadership teams bringing them through those four phases of the deep equity process, but then also helping them along with any uh, faculty advisors that they have to figure out what their program is going to look like. So it's really an empowering experience for the kids to go through with the experts okay. and then design it. And so that's what we need to decide is, are we going to go with that program or do we feel like we have the capacity in-house to do that ourselves and to lead the students through that? Or are there other programs that are available? I think it would be interesting, just throwing this out. Uh, first of all, I commend you, because I think this is great. Thanks. I think this is fabulous. Um, and I think that as we struggle with having uh, diversity in our schools and having changes in the demographic and having changes just <coughs> in society mm -hmm. and, and um, recognition in society, I, I think this is fabulous. I think we're ahead of the game. And now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, yeah, it came back to me. So um, we, a couple of years ago before you came, we, uh, the board approved a new course, and I'm blanking on the name, but Janice and Ed know it. And we had a group of those students come back to talk to us. Multicultural. What was the name of the course? Multicultural Studies. Multicultural, Multicultural Studies. Yes. And what, when the students came back, I thought it was very powerful what they had to say about what they had learned in that course. So I would just throw out there the idea that maybe those are some of the students too as well who have gone through that course to tap. It might be interesting to see students before and after do kind of like a pre-post because it's, it's kind of the same idea, isn't it? it They're exploring some of the same themes. about awareness, right? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Posting so. lenses, basically. Just throw of your own lens and right. other people's yeah. lens. Another people's yeah. lens. Yeah. Right. But yeah, thank you, because this right. is great. As we get down into the identification of students, then Ed and Janice will help us figure out who those kids are that will help us. Great. All right, thank you. Comments or questions? Good. Thank you very much. Um, student handbooks. Uh, every Going year. from the esoteric to the... Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, every year the student handbooks, uh, the discipline sections of the student handbooks have come to the board for approval and then they become board policy. Uh, we've been, in some of the meetings we've had with the attorneys over the last couple of years, they've recommended that the entire handbook be approved just so that uh, the entire book has uh, kind of the blessing of the board and the approval of the board moving forward. Um, Scott's led a lot of this along with our assistant principals in the building. Um, and then Scott, you're working on uh, what's the timeline? Yeah, uh, well, Karen Taylor and Kelly Zerner brought forward an idea of, of creating a District 99 online handbook, which I think is a fabulous idea. Um, it would give us greater uh, accessibility for our parents and our students. Mm -hmm. um, it would make us a little more efficient and consistent when we do our changes. Um, all, but one of the positive things coming from that. Um, which they highlighted was really be able to provide some resource links in there. Mm -hmm. um, so we would like to um, create that this year for the 2020 school year. We would still do the printed handbook um, for the 2020 school year. And then, you know, we would obviously talk about what that looks like in the future. Um, but I think that would be a benefit to the district and I think it was a great idea. And mm -hmm. So we're gonna work on it this year with your blessing and 
um, have that ready for the next school year. Why would we do the printed one in addition? Um, that's what we're going to discuss. We want to okay. we want to see how the online version, if we if we get good feedback from it, and and then talk about um, you know what do we do in the future for a, a printed handbook. Yeah, I was just going to ask if it's a possibility to opt in or opt out. I I wouldn't suggest just having online because that's not a prerequisite. Everybody may not be familiar. Sure, they might not have True. access. Yeah, so. yeah, but uh, an opt out <coughs> option if it's not a law that we have to have a written handbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the printed copy is always a good idea for some parents. Yeah. You know. So yeah. this is coming up for approval. For this year's. For, for this year's. Yeah, this school year. Yeah, we're but looking Scott's saying we're, we're working towards right. this year. But for this coming year. school year, we'll work to build the online version for the following school year. Yeah. But we'll still do the printed. Mm -hmm. uh, for the first time around, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No. So. Yeah. Flight of ideas of mine. So. I was thinking I have not really had a lot of time to look at it since it hit board docs. I don't know how other people feel. It was some heavy reading. So uh. So I'm just <laughs> wondering, is there any reason we can't move it off of recommendations for action and make it later? Are we, we sure can. We yeah. have uh, action we have the cliff notes on the August 4th meeting. Okay. So August 4th is gathering action items. So we could put it off till then, and then it would still be approved. In, or sixth, sorry. Um, if yeah. you guys want to join me, I would find that helpful. <laughs> the cliff notes. Is there any way to sum up the changes? That's yeah. Well, that's yeah. the other thing. Like I, a summary. That's, like that's, I, was, I, I kept looking for it, and I thought, okay, so where's the changes? And, yeah. and many. I, I mean, I can I can do that. I think many of the changes really fell in the discipline area. Oh. Um, so it was really more. I think, which is a great idea to take like our athletic code that's embedded in there that hasn't changed that's been in the handbook for years mm -hmm. yeah. just to have you guys approve that officially like Hank was saying mm -hmm. so yeah. um, I can absolutely reach out to Karen and Kelly and get some feedback on what some of the different changes were in there but it's really consistent with what we've had yeah. it's really just the discipline <clears throat> that changes yeah. Yeah. Almost, almost no changes yeah. except adding cigarettes and those kind of things to some okay. smoking. Okay. Otherwise, which I think we sent you at an earlier. We did. Which we approved. Yeah, we yeah, did. Yeah. 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 So, again, it's really the stuff but that's think, been the, you know. this, the staple of the handbook. Mm -hmm. Right. That, like Hank is saying, is a good idea to just have you guys approve really the whole handbook. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rather than just the discipline area. So if we could have a little more time, that would be. Sure. And a, okay. and a crosswalk of changes. And I've have recommended this for years and I'm going to recommend it again I think as a parent because I as a parent never really went through the entire handbook it would be nice it would be nice to have almost like a, um, when you go when when you go into a hospital I always bring it back to healthcare but when you go into a hospital you have a patient's bill of rights and it says the patient is um, you know has a right to uh, care without prejudice, a patient has a right to be informed about their care, a patient has all of these rights. And then they have patient responsibilities. You know, patients have to tell their caregivers about their symptoms and patients have to do this and patients have to cl comply. And I think it would be nice if we had just kind of like a synopsis, like a cliff notes where we said, I'm just throwing this out there to think, it doesn't even have to be for this year, but maybe for next. Um, you know, students have responsibilities too. Students are responsible to come to class. Students are responsible to come to class prepared. Students are responsible not to carry any kind of weapons into the organization. And I mean, these are really commonplace things, but I think it would be helpful have to really spell mind. it out very clearly, you know. So the, the opening couple of pages of the handbook are what we provide in our philosophy and our belief mm -hmm. statements. That's what the handbook opens with. Right. And then at the end, uh, of the discipline section is all of the kind of the summary of the discipline policies. There's a grid there. Okay. Um, but we could look at, uh, especially as they work towards the digital version, mm -hmm. maybe giving some little quick bookmarks to quick links, quick jump to mm -hmm. those sections in the handbook. That would be great. Yeah, I'd, I'm not su suggesting that we have this for August 4th, but oh, yeah. it would be nice to have because I think it's a, it's a lot and it's, I can never find my handbook and it's going to be nice to have it electronically and um, it would just be nice to be able to find something. Yeah, because the things you're asking for are in there, but sometimes I agree finding find. them is a challenge. Yeah. So yeah. we could work on You know, like dress code. Quick. Yeah, dress code. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, the quick things that you know, 
kids or parents are going to be looking yeah, once for it becomes right electronic your table of contents becomes clickable yeah. right so instead of trying yeah. to scroll through and find <laughs> stuff now you just click and go yeah. right and that's a lot faster a lot better version than the, yeah. the paper is mm -hmm. yeah, that's a great idea right. so great thank you so I'd be interested to know what happened to the dress code. Is Go this ahead. going to be a one-time deal in terms of we're going to approve the entire handbook this year, and then in subsequent years we're going to bring it back every year? So we don't we don't like reapprove our entire board policy every, every year. I mean, what what's we're the notion? How is this different? Discipline policy every year. But is it because things change so much in the way to the state too? Right? Some of it is just stuff we have to follow because it's right or no? Yeah, and then there's, there's just year-to-year -year changes. Yeah, but this is what you ordain in, in respect for the... all of the procedures for the students. Yeah, yeah. in respect yeah. to the law. So as we make changes next year, we, we could do the same thing and just provide, track some changes for right you as to it. what changed mm -hmm. in it. Yeah, or just give you an executive summary of the changes from year to year. But since we've never approved it in the past, yeah, that's why we're just bringing it once for, okay, here's our starting point. And then we could track changes from year so, to year. So Ooh, provided okay. that there are some things that we are not um, comfortable with, per se, mm -hmm. is there even room for negotiation on some things? Or I'm, I'm just curious because we're approving this, and if we so the answer is yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we can. We, okay, I just want to. We're be being sure. asked to approve it, and mm -hmm. we okay, can have plenty of discussion, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm, about, I'm just looking at it. Right. I, I would think that you could pull out, you know, maybe f f 4C or something like that if you don't like the, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't I know mean, what I that is off the top of my head. I know ahead of time. Well in advance. Yes. <laughs> so we've agreed. No surprises the I, night. I, right. I, right. I read uh, a, a lot of it, and I didn't have anything per se, but I was just curious since we're yeah. talking about. Oh. Can I jump in? A lot of it, I think, is like informational, mm -hmm. and that's where I think Hank was saying like it's going to be great to have more of a table of contents mm -hmm. online to be able to jump to those sections to really learn about um, something specific, you know, intervention or support at the schools. Um, you know, in terms of the one thing we do have to consider with this approval for this year is that the handbook is already being printed, mm -hmm. so that's I mean we're that's a little bit of an issue, um, and that's I think what. But that also gives us the benefit of why we want to make it online as well to then, sure. you know, we'll mm -hmm. approve it again next year because we're going to, you know, we may be tweaking some things to con condense it, concise it, you know, like all that. Um, so is, there, just be a yeah. great. is there an opportunity if somebody really has a problem with something that we file an errata for the... Yeah, handbook? we did last year with yeah. the dress code. Yeah, yeah dress that's code. right. The dress code. Yeah, so we can. Yeah, yeah I, I'm going on record different. say I don't have a problem with anything that I read thus far. I'm just asking. <laughs> and, and <if> <laughs> now we're all going to be looking. Yeah, the difference is, I mean, <laughs> there's purpose behind us being asked to suddenly yeah, approve yeah. the whole thing, and now it's part of policy. We're not asking for tax so, approval. Yes. So, um, concern, please let me know. Okay. So, it makes sense we would go through it and let you know if there's anything that we is, have an issue with. Is August 6th enough time? Because are there differences between North and South handbook? Slight. Yeah, I know. Um, just different not, information that's not provided. substantive, but not, not true. So, if we go through one, we'll, yeah. 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 Well, wait, wait, and you've already we'll, seen the but. discipline <laughs> policy changes. <laughs> Some, wait, wait, wait. So there, there are there are differences between yeah, like the two. Who well, the like the location, the phone numbers, and the <laughs> yeah, those kinds of things are different inside of it. That's those are the. So that makes sense that those things would be different, but there's no, nothing no, else no. that's different. But nothing the substantive. Codes different, right? are all the same. I mean, like for example, I think um, I think the South Handbook references the care team, whereas North, you know, doesn't reference that. So they give some description about the care team. So. I mean, that's going to be different because that's, a, you know, a, a, an initiative that South has, just like North will have a few of those that will spell out and describe what they have that South doesn't. So there is differences, but, you know, the programming and everything that we're doing is still similar. So that's the difficulty, and that's why one of the reasons why Karen and Kelly wanted to go to a district handbook that's to kind of just say, say yeah. you know, let's, let's, we never have done this before, right? We've always kind of had separate mm -hmm. handbooks and we've kind of and then in the recent years there's been more of like let's align them more and more the discipline's always been the same because that is by you guys approving has to be the same and you guys are approving that so this is our opportunity to really just say let's really look at it yeah. let's kind of 
you know, if we have stuff that we don't need to be in there because we can do it in different links and things like that, let's kind of really have it just be really the same. So they are not exactly the same right now okay. in terms that was of just some descriptions and some details. That was my thought too, yeah. if, uh, if they're similar. That's why I was asking about it. Yeah, so you can't necessarily read word for word and be like, oh, it, you know, these are exactly the same. But it's no but our goal would be to create one that's the same. Right, District 99. And then we'll figure out how do we make the handbook then just be simplified in terms of a cover, the, you know, the names of the staff, and maybe a few other things just depending right. on how we go about it throughout the year. Okay. Uh, so is it is it possible since we've now brought it to the board <clears throat> that we move it to approval for September yeah, yeah, yeah. that gives us time that gives you time to put together um, a crosswalk if yeah, you will about okay. what the differences are yeah. I don't think we have to worry about like the principal's name or the phone numbers but anything that is different care team different yeah. very similar I know so it should be think, it should I, be one page and I'm gonna jump in but I yeah. think Hank's main point which I totally agree with is that you know, like we, we have like say the code of conduct mm -hmm. and you guys don't technically approve that and that's where he's saying that the attorneys and his idea of approving I think is a great idea. Mm -hmm. So it's like those things that are I think the critical pieces of approving a handbook. Um, but yeah, I can absolutely go through and try to look at where some of the differences are, but they are similar. <coughs> yeah. It's gonna be some of those things about yeah. their team, other things that are different. Yeah. Anything that is a little bit substantive sure. not absolutely yeah. ed versus janice or anything yeah. like that but that would be helpful mm -hmm. many of the a good portion of it re uh, states what's already board policy right there's a, a lot of the handbook spells out in common language a lot of times what the board has already approved within policy um you know so really there's big chunks of that there's the discipline code and then there's the informational stuff yeah. around it uh, i would prefer an approval date before the school year that's starts. what i was i, I was uh, yeah so can we have it in place before the school it, because the students get it um isn't it well it's printed it's being it's printed. Already printed yeah so we so would have to inform anybody if, if the board chose to change something afterwards which is fine we've done that before um I'm all right going through, though, by August. I'll do it quickly yeah. to go yeah. through and give you. Okay. Get you that by the August 4th date. Yeah. Okay. I would say we, we, do it, we do it for August. Mm -hmm. doesn't stop us from continuing. You know, if you haven't had a chance Changing to go it. through as thorough, I mean, we can always bring something up in October if there's something in the UC yeah. then, right? You said we're going to do it yeah. yearly, so. Mm -hmm. It's just to the point that we don't want anybody to just give tacit approval. No. Gives us an opportunity to read it. I'm going to be mm -hmm. honest. I didn't read the whole thing. I didn't either. I got like, glanced through the table of contents because mm -hmm. um, I didn't go to board docs until this morning. So, <laughs> well, I know. I know. <laughs> In the summer, the summer, I'm right there with Nancy. I didn't, I didn't go till today. Either. Yeah, I went so last just, night. Just to clarify, then we're looking at the twentieth. No, the fourth. The sixth. The sixth. The sixth. The sixth. Oh, the sixth. sixth. I'm sorry, there is no fourth. Show. I thought. I thought you said <laughs> it was the fourth. I said the right date. Yeah. The okay. All right. So that, that's what I want to know. Do you want another night to discuss it? Discuss it on the sixth. The kids then, will come on the seventeenth. Kids will come on the seventeenth, yeah. but. I can do it by the sixth. Can everybody six, do it by the sixth? Yeah, I, I think I think that's that's, work done that's important. Six. Yeah, sure. I think that's yeah. important. Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking a little sick. I think he's going on vacation. I will be on vacation. But you've read it from cover to cover. Right? Yeah. He hasn't memorized. He's going to try to memorize. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is what he does for, right. for free time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, for is sure. Is this what you do for your free time? <laughs> well, let's is move that on. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. Please <Fine>. proceed. <laughs> Greg, is that okay for you? We'll start getting information in the, the weeks leading up to it so you're prepared on the 6th. Okay. Great. Great. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Who knew that would be such a... Hey, you weren't going to like Disney World or anything. <laughs> All right. So that will not be, we will not take any action on that, on that one tape. tonight. So we can right. skip that one when we get to action. And then uh, introducing Ms. Lisa Ballo to discuss some special education services. <laughs> Good evening. So um, thank you for the opportunity to get to um, introduce myself to everybody. Um, my name is Lisa Ballo. I'm the Director of Special Services um, here for the first year in District 99. Um, 
So we're just gonna go through a pretty quick agenda tonight to re really kind of give you an idea of the financial outlook um, for um, students who are outside placed within special education within the district, um, what my role has been this year, um, some great outcomes that I think that we've really done in a very short period of time, and then some next steps uh, moving forward. So there's me, um, just a little bit about me so you know who I am. I'm not just, you know, who, who is this person? I live here in Downers Grove. Um, I have for the last 13 years, I am a Cubs fan. <laughs> um, you had me yes, till what, what if everybody was a Sox fan? We could have, that, that was a risk. Oh no, that's okay. That was <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The only thing on in my house are sports. So um, this is my son's eighth birthday party. So he's eight years old, um, but third generation in Downers Grove my husband grew up here his dad grew up here um, so there was no other place that we were allowed to live when we got married um, so I started out as a special educator um, also was a dean for a number of years assistant principal and then have been a special ed director for the last nine years now first year here in District 99. So for the financial outlook, what I kind of wanted to start with is good news first, right? Mark alluded um, to some of the things that we're looking forward uh, with next year with some increases, and we will talk about it at the bottom of the slide there, but wanted to just look at this year. In just this year in 17-18, um, we actually ended up saving approximately, I think it, it, I said 190,000, I think it was 188 to be exact. But um, we actually ended up having eight students just within this last year that we brought back to their home school so either to Downers Grove North or South these were students that were originally outside placed at a wide variety of placements throughout the suburbs mm -hmm. which also includes T99 where we brought students back to um, and then we also had three students um, that were attending outside placements who were dropped due to non-attendance so that's where that hundred and ninety thousand dollars comes in for just this school year okay um, and the reason why I think it's important to kind of just talk about this school year and then you'll see that second bullet point is just by those few number of students two million dollars within the next four years will be saved by those moves because when you think about those students staying with us for a fair number of years and many of our students as many of you know through our t99 program um, stay with us many of our our, our just significant students stay with us until the day before their 22nd birthday and so when you make a move on one of those students when there may be potentially a ninth or a tenth grader you can consider the savings that um, we would get from that and most importantly yes it's a savings and obviously we're all happy about that um, but the number one priority and what I'll talk about a little bit in the outcomes on a for on a future slide is that our number one priority for these kids and why we're here in special ed right is to get our students ready for life after school services and the best way to do that is to get them into their home school have access to the general ed curriculum as much as possible have access to their regular ed peers and their community and t99 in in, in uh, for example really does a great job of that of getting our kids into our community and so when they're done with t99 and they're living here still in downers grover and woodridge and surrounding communities they feel comfortable here they know how to access things and they're successful um, so that hundred and ninety thousand, i thought was a, a really a, a good number for just a very short period of time this year to get to know um, a approximately 75 students we have a fair number of students that are outside place so to get to know them and their families this year and to make those moves within this first school year um, and then to obviously realize over the next four years that additional savings that's a quick question when you say outside placed Mm -hmm. What are you? Referring? So we have students that um, their needs exceed what we can provide for them at within Downers Grove North okay. and South. So um, all over the suburban area, um, all the way up through Palatine, Evanston, sort of all over the suburban area. I spend a lot of time in my car. Um, we have students that are placed at a wide variety of schools to meet their specific needs. And like Mark alluded to, some of those are very medically focused. Some of those are spe very specifically uh, focused to maybe students um, who have autism. Um, a fair number of different reasons of why that occurs. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit on a future slide. But um, 
We have about, about 75 students, which is a large number of students for a district this size. So um, because you're I just, it's kind of off the, the topic, but since you're bringing more students back, mm -hmm. how are we in terms of capacity, in, especially in the transition program? Well, we did add one teacher to the transition program for next year, so we will have five classrooms at the transition program. When is the, that's a big, it's a big program. Um, but what I think is really unique and wonderful about T99 is that students aren't showing up at 8 a.m. and staying there all day and leaving at 2.30 p.m. They're in and out of that place in the community, right, where they're supposed to be, either on jobs um, at the YMCA, volunteer opportunities, um, and doing things with their peers, um, which is what we want to assimilate, right, which is what their adult life should look like. Um, so you can accommodate I guess more students than you would typically think because you're not all there at the same time. Um, but then the, the last bullet point um, that Mark talked a little bit about is we are really kind of projecting about an $800,000 increase for next school year with this population. And really what that um, equals to why that's coming about is we have, we had eight students this year um, who will be outside placed for next school year um, that came from their home school, so either from north or south to one of these outside placements that I'm talking about, and three of those those eight were students that were in lieu of expulsion. So these are um, these are young people who engage in some behavior that is not safe for them to continue to be in the building, and so we are educating them outside of the building. So that's three of the eight. We do have seven new SASID students um, coming into our district. They have either moved into our district um, within the last year, or they are incoming ninth graders who have very significant disabilities that we cannot meet their needs within the regular buildings. Um, and usually that's not only the tuition, as you alluded to earlier, but it's also the related services that go along with that tuition. So it's potentially a one-on-one -on -one aid. Um, two of those students actually have one-on-one -on -one medical aids. Um, and then some of the more specific uh, related services like um, pretty intensive occupational therapy or audiology or vision itinerant and sort of the list sort of goes on and on but we have seven new students which is a, a unusual number for one year uh, we also have two um, new child serve students and I don't know if everybody is aware of the fact that we do have a facility within our school boundaries um, that serves students who um, are serviced by DCFS and that, that organization's name is ChildServe. And often um, ch children who are receive, who are living in those facilities obviously sometimes come in with some more si significant social and emotional needs. And often they require an outside placement as well. So we had two new move-ins this year. Um, and then we also had two new move-ins this year um, of students that were currently under expulsion in a previous district that moved into us. And so we obviously have to uphold that and place them in an outside placement and not in the homeschool setting and so that's where that eight hundred thousand dollars comes from for that increase so what I would really like to be able to see is provide something like this for the board every year so you can see not only what our savings is um, but what our projected savings would be and then also really kind of the influx um, of the students that we are receiving each year so I have to ask yes so what's the projected for your cost of don't have that yeah no i the the total cost well so i mean well, so you're illustrating you know what our savings are mm -hmm. and you know how how what's happening this year is translating into future savings um, clearly there's got to be some increased costs that we're projecting to oh you mean going from, the forward. from the last yeah, yeah. And, and that's something we'll need to budget for well absolutely however I also think um, and what we'll talk about in a future slide too is that um, every year we are going to continue have more opportunity and to continue to work with the staff on what students that are currently outside place can we bring back into our environment so just because like this year just because a couple students started in there as an outside placement for example maybe as a freshman doesn't mean that they're there forever and so every year I go into that meeting and my conversation with the family really is 
at what opportunity, at what time would it be appropriate, or would it, will it ever be? And, and frankly, for some students, it, it won't be ever, it won't be appropriate. But for a fair number of our students, at some point, it would be appropriate to bring them back into a regular environment. And so it's that constant, every year, kind of revisiting that conversation. Um, so because we have that projected increase, potentially maybe some of those seven students that we talked about, the seven SASID students, we might have one or two of those students that may not stay. Um, within those environments and so that's a continued um, evaluation every year as I attend those meetings. Same with students that are expelled we evaluate mm -hmm. how their performance is going at that outplacement to determine if, mm -hmm. if they're going to stay where we can bring them back. So really what my role is, I sort of just broke it down into the two domains that you all are familiar with, with the student experience and then the development and evaluation of staff. Um, probably the biggest piece of domain one for me um, is I am the direct case manager to all of the outside place students and their families. So those 75 families, families um, I'm their direct link. You know, they're not having to call Donners Grove North or South and sort of navigate through that. They have registration you know, questions they call call me. I'm the person that shows up to their meeting. Um, I'm the person that follows through with whatever we discuss at their meeting. So they're not really having to navigate um, a large building where maybe potentially they may or may not know folks, right, because their student doesn't attend there. Um, so that's an enormous um, part of my role. Um, and what goes along with that then is the access to the le that least restrictive environment. Um, at the high school level, it is essential, and this is part of my conversation at every meeting, how can we get your student to have access to their home school? Maybe that's just through extracurricular activities to begin with. Maybe that's just through some um, snowball activities or some dances, or maybe it's just a class to start with, right? And we slowly sort of integrate the student. Um, I have three students right now that I know of that are gonna be, have a partial schedule in the fall. So they'll be half time their outside placement, half time their home school. And then eventually, hopefully by the end of the year, they'll be in their home school full time. Also collaboration with our partner districts. As we know, we have a fair number of partner districts, which also though includes SACID. Uh, SACID is an enormous organization. It has a wide variety of coordinators that I work with on a pretty consistent basis. What's been great about this year is myself and Scott have met with our partner districts and SACID partners um, at least four to five times this year. Um, and then we are on speed dial with one another. They call me, hey, I have a new student. This is what we're thinking about with placement. Are, would you guys be okay with that? Because they are an eighth grader. Do you have some other options? What do you think? You know, we're collaborating on those things. So we're not just in a position where whatever decision was made in eighth grade, that's just the decision was made and, and we sort of have to live with it. We're collaborating and talking about those decisions. Um, I am the district evaluator for the certified staff at T99. In my previous district, I also was the um, evaluator for our transition. Um, staff so um, that's been a lot of fun for me I've been able to not only be the evaluator but be over there and spend a decent amount of time at T99 um, also, the special education district team approach, what I love about this is myself and Scott work very, very closely with our special ed department chairs, as well as our coordinator at the T99 program. So we're constantly talking about how do we make our programs better? What's our FTE going to look like? How can we do things differently? Um, and because we all have a wide variety of experiences, we're all um, kind of working on this together. Um, and we all have uh, something to add to the conversation. Um, and then lastly, really, I think a great daily support to staff. So um, in the past, a lot of people were trying to get a hold of Scott. And Scott was at a lot of these meetings that I'm talking about. Um, and so now at least there's two of us. And there's two of us. So when he's not here, I can answer the phone. I can get back to somebody um, and vice versa. So the staff have di more direct access to either one of us on a daily basis. 
outcomes that I think um, we've talked about some of these already, that greater access to the LRE, um, the annual and the projected dollar savings. Um, one that I just am really proud of is I really feel like we've I've developed really good family um, relationships with my families. Um, and that's really important. Uh, these families are dealing with a lot. They have a lot on their plate and they need somebody to be an advocate, advocate for them in the building and somebody who understands what they're going through. Um, so that's a huge part of what um, I really want to try to um, build uh, as I'm attending those meetings with them as a good strong rapport. Um, those strong relationships with the partner districts, um, we did just change transportation companies and I know that that's one thing that many of our families are very happy about. Um, we are moving to a different company that um, other uh, districts have really had great success with and so our families had uh, so experienced some, some issues with our last transportation company company um, and so they're very happy about this change um, but there's a lot of communication that goes along with that and so it's really kind of bridging the gap for them there um, again that special education district team problem solving team um, we we at attacked a lot this year and I think one big one was if there is a student at north or south that folks are kind of thinking about um, maybe the student might need something else that we have a very sort of prescribed process of how to go about doing that um, so we sit down and we really problem solve. Have we tried everything? What else can we try? What else can we do before we um, don't allow this student to have access to their home school? So um, a lot of problem solving there. So next steps. Um, one of the things I'm really excited about is um, the folks at SAS had asked me to be on their autism committee. Um, it's going to be a two-year process where we're really looking at not only our current students who are on the spectrum who are in need of outside placements, but what the other districts are that um, SAS had serves, and to see if we can um, look at what programming um, we could have that might look different within the SASET organization that might assist some of those students. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, communication to parents and partner districts. Um, I'm going to put together some, a series sort of of letters and informational pieces for seventh grade parents. Mm -hmm. So as they're going into their eighth grade year of special education, that they have an idea of what that high school process looks like, right? Because I show up to those eighth grade meetings meetings um, for all the students that are currently outside place and so parents just it's not the first time they're hearing it at an eighth grade meeting is that they've got that information going into that um, Scott and I have also been working on um, working with our related service staff to really kind of document uh, what they do with students in our home schools who those students are how, how much time they're spending with them what they're doing with them um, and then, of course, the ongoing evaluation of our outside place student data um, will be something that I keep a very close eye on and be able to come back and, and provide these reports on an annual basis. And then lastly, really looking at our special education programs within our buildings and what professional development needs they currently have. Um, we're going to be working next year on... Um, as you guys know, we hired um, an LEA for North, so now we have one at North and South, and it's really that um, time and availability for those folks then to be spending with our staff and our teachers um, to work on some professional development pieces that relates as it relates to stu student need. Okay, any questions, anything? So S Scott was handling all this uh, on, top it, on top of everything <laughs> before we, yeah. Oh, wow. <clears throat> wow. Because yeah. this, this sounds like you got your mm -hmm. plate full. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it, but it's working together with a, with a really nice group of people. And putting heads together and not having to do it by yourself, special ed can be kind of a lonely place when you have to do it by yourself. So when you work with other people who have a wide variety of experiences, it's nice. What, what is the reputation of District 99 with regard to, you know, if I'm a parent with a child with special needs, am I considering moving to, to this school district to have my child attend District 99? What, what's the general re reputation there? Well, that's a great question. We were literally just having this conversation last week because I alone fielded at least five um, phone calls this year of my student has an IEP. This is what, you know, their services and needs are. 
we're moving to Downers Grove. What can you tell me about Downers Grove? I've heard I'm supposed to move to Downers Grove. Um, I will also tell you as somebody who has worked in previous districts who have had large, for example, transition programs, our transition program is phenomenal when you compare it to a lot of other transition programs in the area. And when I say phenomenal, I not only mean just from the student, from the staff perspective of who works there, but the level of programming and the level of outreach that those staff that those staff provide families. We have staff going with families to help them bridge that gap from when my student turns 22 to adult services. Um, that's a real level of uh, service that a not a lot of, of transition programs provide. So it's a blessing and a curse, right? Because right. We, we, are, we, are, we have more and more students on, a, on an annual basis, which is why I think we see that, that increase. Um, but we're providing a phenomenal service to these families who are, are in need. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. we, we get some state aid for those students. We're not bearing the correct well cost of facility everything. placements we get a yeah. good, and, we, and actually bigger costs which is uh, not a bigger but another part of the cost is the transportation services mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. that and we are still those two items are still outside of this evidence-based model mm -hmm. so we do get a, a big block of money that doesn't change each year for special ed that used to change mm -hmm. and fluctuate based on our outside placements but on some of those placements so um, but we do get about 80% of uh, recovery on the transportation costs for those students, which did go up pretty heavily this last yeah. year. Um, and um, and uh, for the pr private facility placements, mm -hmm. the, which are some of the higher need Needs to. kids, they usually medically are, are usually medically. Uh, mm -hmm. or have heard, have heard, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm just going to ask if our newer board members have been out to the transition house. Have I ever been? I'm sorry, what? Have, have our newer board members been to the transition house? I have oh. not. Not yet, no. I was there. I want school gets up and going. This spring. We should probably have a meeting there. For a visit. <laughs> yeah. We're really proud of it, but uh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, you asked a question about where's this going to be for the next couple of years of the 800. Not only do we, we there's some kids that will come uh, age out mm -hmm. and, and come off. Right? And also, we do look at things like the T99. We, we do look at, well, now we took one student in from another school. Mm -hmm. Last year is a tuition to offset some of the costs, and and we, time to time, we started looking at our programs to see if we could pull together enough kids from our own district and maybe with some others to house them in district or have our own in-house program or in-district mm -hmm. program, rather than paying SASED or another one. So we, mm -hmm. those are the ways that when we get the numbers get to the right point, you say, okay, we can probably sustain this, because you want to don't want to do it for one or two years you want right. to be able right. to sustain it and t99 has been i think a magnet mm -hmm. for some of these, these other kids and communities too so i mean we do it right when we do it and we probably we <coughs> save money because there's less transportation costs mm -hmm. we're not sending them up to elmhurst or you know right. these yeah. further places and it, it, so you have to it's part of the budget management uh, process for this whole area mm -hmm. Are you saying that having a strong T99 is is good from a financial standpoint as well for the district? It's certainly on transportation costs and also, um, yeah, I think it is because we, you know, one issue that comes into play when you're thinking of budgets and this is drilling down pretty deep, but um, high schools typically have a higher salary schedule and so we have to be careful because as a co-op usually has a blended schedule which is somewhere in between an you know, elementary or high school mm -hmm. schedule so depending on severity of the program it could cost it could be no savings but um, the bigger thing that was really I know that because it was a couple of us who had the idea to, to bring T99 in district um, it's it's just better for the families and we think it's mm -hmm. better to keep them in their community yeah. all these students rather than sending them out where they're the stranger in a yeah. bigger group you know so um, it's quality too. Plus, it helps the community too. The community Absolutely. feels part of um, of our student body. body, and you know, if they're yeah. working outside, you know, at yeah, the Jewel the or at mm -hmm. at uh, some of the other facilities where mm -hmm. they work, it, it it just is a a one-two punch. 
mm-hmm. for the community. And I actually had a couple of students this year who are not of transition age yet. They're about two years out, um, but a, a large part of the conversation at that meeting was they are going to go to T99 at some point, and so why don't we bring them back to their home school before they get to T99 so they have a sense of their community within their home school before they get there and they work with that, that group of peers that they would then transition with. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was a big piece for the family that, that, that happened for their students. So thank you. Thank you for your report. Thank Thank you you. for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you. 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 Go propose proposed state and local municipal tobacco ordinances. Uh, last month we discussed whether or not the board would be interested in considering a resolution to encourage uh, state and local units of government to increase the legal age to purchase tobacco, tobacco <coughs> products, and electronic cigarettes to the age of 21. Uh, out of last month's meeting, we worked with our legal counsel to put together this resolution that encourages them to ju- to do just that. Okay. So should the board take action on, on this later under action items, I will then forward the signed resolution along with the cover letter to all of the local municipality contacts we have as well as state representatives that represent the District 99 community, uh, encouraging them to take this kind of action. Yeah. I think the number should go to 78. <laughs> 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 Take me a moment to hear what you said. Oh. <laughs> okay, no. Master Facility Plan Progress. I have a quick presentation. Uh, the board, I, I'm sorry I didn't get this to you till today because we didn't meet until this morning. So this is hot off the presses. Um, so uh, we met this morning and these were the I- agenda items we went through. So uh, I will provide you some quick updates on each of these items going forward, starting with the air conditioning project. Uh, South is ahead of schedule, where North is on schedule. All the equipment should be received uh, by the end of this week to complete the project. So once all the stuff is here, then it's it's putting it in place. Uh, The guys this morning said that they would have provided pictures, but it's pictures of a lot of like pipes. (laughs) Pipes. <laughs> so, Boxes. nothing exciting at this point. Um, but uh, right now, we're sticking to our timeline that the system will come online uh, somewhere between August 10th and 13th. Uh, and then, once there's bodies in the building and everything else, then we kind of balance that system out. Um, so, we might hear complaints that the building is too cold. <laughs> Uh, for the first few weeks of school um, All right. until they get that balance in, in place. Uh, so that, that'll be a different complaint be than new. we've ever had. That'll yes. be new for them. Yeah. So, um, well, then we won't have to worry about the dress code. They say that that takes, say, takes somewhere between two and six weeks to balance out the system <laughs> and get it cooking. Yeah, spot heaters. Spot heaters. Spot heaters. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a new challenge for us to, to navigate. So, um, but this is going great. So all of the prep work that Jim and that team did leading up uh, to this summer has really paid off. So moving forward where we should on that. Uh, we did, uh, started discussing, again, the outdoor improvements. The theme team met on this earlier this spring. And now they brought back some preliminary ideas and drawings to the core team. Uh, Some of the things we're looking at is increasing our bleachers up to about 3,000 seats. That's about a 500 or plus increase on each side of town. Uh, Each of them with about 42 wheelchair seats (coughs) and 32 companion seats in the first row of the bleachers, which will be brand new for us. Um, As we discussed with the community squad rooms and some storage underneath those bleachers, and then uh, also remodeling our visiting bleachers. We haven't seen the diagrams of those yet, so I can't give you counts, but we're out of that theme team. The request was a 750 seat uh, bleacher with uh, accessible accommodations and storage underneath. Um, one of the things I know we talked about as we worked on the referendum process was prioritizing different parts of the project. And we saw very clearly from our community that the bleachers and the turf were a low priority. So when we looked at this, we thought, oh, well, we'll just do those further down in the plan. But um, as we move across around stuff inside the space, 
we need we may need to or inside the building we ne may need that space under the bleachers mm. for usable space and we may need or we know we will need right. the re water retention space under the artificial turf at south to make up for the increased footprint at south so although those are low priorities for the, meeting the needs of our community and our school, they might be high needs in completing the project. Um, so we might, you know, although it's a lower priority in our community's wishes to just pull this whole thing off, those things might get done earlier. <clears throat> um, going on, we also have been discussing the idea of these prototype classrooms since there's a variety of new furniture coming in across the building and some new classrooms coming online as a result of the master facility project. Um, so uh, we have three classrooms, as I mentioned last month, at each school. Before school starts, those will have new flooring, walls, lighting, taking advantage of a lot of the advances in LED lighting and controllable lighting for those classrooms. And obviously we'll paint them. And then because of the the time it takes to receive some of these items, the walls will be outfitted with writable surfaces that have magnetic uh, features so you can attach stuff to the walls and surfaces, uh, as well as new furniture that, you know, is the different types of furniture we want to try out. But the lead time for that, that'll show up over the course of the fall and we'll be here by winter break. <coughs> um, and just a reminder that those prototype classrooms were designed with both students and staff in the room looking at what we think should be tried in those spaces. <clears throat> so uh, going on, we also looked at the kind of the second rough draft of what some of the preliminary designs are for the major projects around the building and sent back ideas uh, for changes so that we're ready here as the, the the teams come back in August and students come back in August and we have some community meetings I'll mention later on. Around the end of August, we'll be ready to start showing this to the different teams and ultimately to the community. Um, so we're getting closer to that in the preliminary designs, but very draft, rough sketches at this point. Um, and then we started working through phasing so we can break down what order the phases of the, the parts of the plan will come online when things will be torn down and rebuilt. And that also helps us get better budgeting numbers in place for each of the phases so that we can go out for construction management and get a quote for that in August as well. Going on. So just some quick timelines that have been updated and some events that I want you to be aware of. August, as we mentioned, air conditioning comes online during the month of August, uh, starting on August 1st. Uh, we'll be doing uh, with some members of the theme teams and core teams going out to some other area schools and looking at some of their spaces. Um, as teachers and students come back, we'll have those theme teams looking at the plans to make the kind of third round of changes in those drawings. We'll begin looking for a construction manager and going through that process that'll come to the board later on in the fall. And our first community meeting will be August 28th, where we'll show off some of the work that we've done at this point, up to this point. Going on in September, uh, you'll get the true public viewing presentation here at a board meeting of what the designs look like. Um, of course, the board is being provided some of the draft information leading up to that. And then uh, you know, we'll share all of the, the information with the public where it's at. We'll make a, probably in September a recommendation for a construction manager. And then we have a requirement uh, we would do this anyway, but there's a requirement to invite a certain radius of uh, households in our neighborhoods to come in and have a very targeted meeting around what the impact could be for their households. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hold that meeting on September 18th here. We'll do one school first and then the next school <coughs> right away after that. <coughs> and then we'll have a second community meeting uh, that, the next night. Moving on, fall through spring, uh, this gets a little rougher because we don't have true diagrams yet, but we'll finish the documentation and the drawings. Well, I left off somewhere in there, there's uh, planning and review uh, mm -hmm. from the village. Uh, we go out for bids for the first phase of the project, and then we start building that first phase. And then kind of wrapped into that, we'll begin everything for the other phases. Uh, 
in the late spring. And then, uh, let's see, I think that might be, is that the last, that's it. So that's kind of what we learned today. That's four hours in you know, 10 minutes. So. <laughs> For the, um, the, cla the prototype classrooms, um, was it Tarquette that was donating? Um, there was a. I don't remember the vendor. It is. Yeah, it's Tarquette. Tarquette yeah. Donating half, half of the flooring. Floor. Carpet and yeah. uh, tile. Wow. Which was kind of nice. So Great, that was, yeah. that was, you know, wanted to give them a shout out because that was that's appreciated. Yeah. yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. that's a huge deal. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if Jill's considering this, but um, having some photos on our site of what the classroom looks like now and then what it looks like renovated um, would be, nice. would yeah. be yeah. a good idea. They're, they'll also be, they're also working with the architects to put together a variety of forms of feedback, surveys, interviews, and we want to post those things as well so people can see, you know, what, what our staff and students think of these new spaces. Okay. A couple other items. Thank you, don't mind me. Uh, in August, we'll be bringing the architect contract to oh, the board. Thank you, I left that off. Yeah. Uh, August 6th, and uh, just quickly, on the, uh, Hank mentioned it, uh, the village, a couple of years ago, we did the INP2, the rezoning. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a blessing. Uh, so all of this work that we'll be doing is considered a master facility plan from District 99, and it'll go so much smoother. So I'm excited to know that we'll, prepare the documentation and it'll clear so much quicker than if we weren't INP2 and back two, three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so to me that otherwise this phasing would have been elongated to more years. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm very excited and I'm happy that we're working with the village on that. Great. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Terry. You know exactly what I'm thinking. I know what you're thinking. When's the electronic sign gonna go in? <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> uh, okay, moving about on. That this morning. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> should be noted with the zoning, we will be able to get our permits much faster, yes. much easier, because we did debate this issue yeah. a couple years ago, and it was right. the village working with us to help create this entity that we fell in with those parameters that will help this go yeah. through yeah. much quicker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sign or no sign. Rezoning for big, you know, good Sam. The college and uh, there's three. Right. There's only Huge three or four that fall in that category. Um, that there's a lot more to, to play with and uh, with neighboring and the people. So I think it's a hundred times easier. For thank you, Village of Downers Grove, and thank you, Jim. Yeah. 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 Okay, sir. Sure. I would just say, you know, having seen some of the preliminary designs, I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, you know, the specifically the learning commons at both campuses just. I think the community is going to be really happy with what the preliminary designs look like, and I, I hope that you know it generates a lot of excitement in the community. I agree with you, and I would just add that you know it's not just the aesthetics of it; it's the fact it's the that how students learn is changing, and how teachers teach is changing, and it just all goes along. I mean, it looks great, but it's just going to be such a boon to our students yeah. and our faculty. Yeah. The usefulness. Mm -hmm. Really important. Anything else? Yeah, I got goosebumps. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Zilli, have we had freedom of information? We have. Uh, we've had six and that we've responded to. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. <clears throat> we need a motion to approve the personnel report, appointment certified, leave of absence certified, transfer classified, the personnel report, retirement certified, resignation certified, retirement classified, re resignation classified, as well as the financial pages and the closed session minutes and verbatim recordings. I need to draw attention to the revised oh, personnel revised. report A from what was originally posted in the board docs. There's a change correction to the Kara Morrissey appointment certified staff point six fine arts okay. teacher. We've corrected the step and changed the masters to masters plus 15. Oh, was okay. it masters plus 30? Oh, 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 okay. So we're still appointing oh. the same person. It's okay. just the terms of the contract have changed. changed. Okay. Thank you, Pete. All right. Welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Duly noted. So moved. So moved. Mr. Davenport. <laughs> Second. Ms. Pavisich. Thank you. Mike Davenport. Aye. Trey Pavisich. Aye. Cheryl Fuller. Aye. Dan Nicholas. Aye. Rick Pavanato. Aye. 
Don Renner. Aye. Nancy Kupka. Aye. The consent agenda passes. We'll move on from recommendations for action. Taking A off the table, we'll go seek a motion to for the approval of the resolution to encourage an increase in the legal age to purchase tobacco, tobacco products, and electronic cigarettes. I move we uh, um, accept this resolution. Thank you, Terry. Second. Mike Davisich. Aye. Mike Davenport. Aye. Cheryl Fuller. Aye. Dan Nicholas. Aye. Rick Pavanato. Aye. Don Renner. Aye. And Nancy Kupka. Aye. Thank you. Um, motion carries. Moving on to new business policy committee report. First reading. Um, I'll actually turn this over to Pete since I was on vacation when they met. <laughs> I would like it noted for the record that with Hank absent, we had a <laughs> record short duration. <laughs> Very efficient. I'm going to take the floor back from Pete. <laughs> 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 All righty then. Uh, so the, the to summarize, the policies that you have here largely consisted of changing abbreviations and dashes in most of these policies. This is already taking longer than the policy meeting. <laughs> we had a new policy, I thought. Wow. Yeah. Well, wow. Yeah. That's an accelerated Ouch. placement. Correct. Yeah, yeah there is a the new policy. About that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed her. Oh, no, I'm just making it even right. as fast as the meeting with Dal Hank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, you good, do have good work. About yeah, I just, that was the yeah. one that I had questions right. about. Yeah. Yeah. That one was added in response to a change in state law. So it doesn't change anything we're doing now. It essentially formalizes that it's part of our policy that we have okay. programs and policies for the accelerated placement of students. Okay. And before there wasn't? There was. There just we didn't have was we it, practices. We, we didn't have a policy. Yeah. So things like which students go into English one honors. Do students come in at Spanish okay. 2 instead of Spanish 1? Can our students come in at Math 2 based on coursework that they took in middle school? We, we've had those processes in place. We didn't have a formal policy recognizing that there's a way to do that. Okay. Um, so this won't change our practice in any way. It just mm -hmm. formalizes a policy saying we should be doing this. And there was a new law that requires us to put that in policy. Yeah, the law okay. re requires you to have practices, which we already had, right. but it also requires you to have a policy, policy. that says you have those practices. practices yeah. mm -hmm. so okay. And as long as they match, that's yep. all that matters. <laughs> There's actually no matching. It's oh. just saying that you have them. Oh. <laughs> it's just wow. There's no overlap with any other standing policy and, and uh, no. Oh, okay. All right. This is all press language. Yes. Correct. So. <clears throat> cool. Okay. I'm good. All right. Okie dokie. Right. Thank you. Moving on to our second reception of visitors. This is the second reception of visitors, which is intended for audience members to address the board on any topic pertaining to Community High School District 99. Anybody wish to? Hearing none, we'll move on to communications and announcements. Lend. We have not met. Say again? We have not met. Give not. Okay. Uh, SASID. Um, I have two things of note. Uh, they started, they extended the school year programming for uh, SASID credit recovery, and it's been very, very successful. Um, and uh, they have begun construction on the southeast side of the building to um, build out additional classrooms for their students, and things are moving along swimmingly. Uh, 99 Education Foundation. We have not met. We will meet in August. Okay. Uh, IASB, anything, Mike? No report. No report. Okay. Um, our, our upcoming board meetings, August 6th, we'll have a special workshop meeting at 6.30 p.m. here, and August 20th, a regular business meeting at 6.30 p.m. here. Uh, we are going to be moving, I need a motion now to move into closed session for the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district or legal counsel for the <coughs> district, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee or against legal counsel for the district to determine its validity. So moved. Terry Second. Moves. Mike seconds. Terry Pavisich. Aye. Mike Davenport. Aye. Charles Fuller. Aye. Dan Nicholas. Aye. Rick Pavanato. Aye. Don Renner? Aye. Nancy Kupka? 
Aye. Motion carries. The board will be moving into closed session. We will be returning to open session afterwards. There will be no action taken in open session. So y'all should go enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. you.